Hey guys, it's Hunter Wilson, your favorite host for Weld.com, a.k.a. Texas Pipeliner 35. We got a new machine in the shop. We're going to show it off to y'all, and that's the Cyclone 312. Brand spanking new. This thing is beautiful. This thing is awesome. Let's check it out. So out of the box, this machine comes with everything you need. So here's the gauge, it's run of the mill, nothing super fancy, but it's still a really good gauge. It's travel size for your convenience. Comes with its own hose as well. We're gonna get this hooked up to our 7525 bottle. On the bottom side, on the back left-hand side, you're gonna find this red cap, take it out, we don't need it no more. That's where our hose is gonna screw in for our inlet for our argon. It's located directly underneath the power switch in the back. There's also an interchangeable fuse out there that you can change out if need be. This machine also comes with its own MIG gun, its own ground, and its own stinger, and we're gonna talk about it a little bit more. See, that's gold, that's fancy, it makes us feel good. Let's talk more about what this machine comes with right out of the box. So the machine comes with 300 amp stinger and a really good ground. It also comes with extra tips, this multi-tool for changing out the parts, and it has a 36 series MIG gun that's interchangeable with Benzel and other companies. Phenomenal for this unit. It also comes with this really robust handle on top that screws on, and it's got these compartments that I think are for storage. If they're not, that's what I use them for. Put all my extras in there, and the other side is for snacks. So for being such a small machine, we can come over here and open this thing up and we can see we got plenty of room in here. So we can pop a 33 pound spool in here with no issues, fits in there very comfortably. So whatever size spool you need to fit in here, chances are it's going to fit. The other thing is, is we can also add a Teflon liner to the inside of this thing and we can run our aluminum processes and if we need a longer reach because the mig gun isn't long enough you can also add the parker dps 360 gun for the best solution for distance feeding of the mig aluminum the unit also features a four drive roll system on the bottom side we can swap it out for our knurled rollers we also have smooth rollers on top these don't have to be replaced and if you wear them out let me know because i'll be thoroughly impressed so compared to other welders in its class this machine is considerably smaller meaning it takes up less space and it's easier to move around than other roll around MIGs. It's also a transformer based unit. This one is based on a digitally controlled inverter based platform delivering smoother power and increased duty cycle in a much smaller package. So we got the machine turned on. We can see here's our DC for our stick. This is for our dual shield flux core. This is for our flux core. This is for our stainless steel, our aluminum, our C100, and our C25. Those are for the different types of argon you'd be running. This machine is very easy to navigate. The display is easy to read with large print and large letters for volts and amps, which is very easy to see at a distance. Navigation, again, is super easy. This machine is so convenient. It almost takes all the work out of it. So we got ourselves a simple little T-joint setup that we're gonna weld here. Let's come over here, check out our machine settings, make sure we like everything. We got it set on C25. Since we're gonna be running a 7525 mix on our argon, this is the setting we wanna use. Here we have control of our pre-flow, post-flow, our inductance, which we got set at 65. It's a lot like arc force. We're gonna talk about it here in a second. But we have our burn back. We can set our 2T and 4T trigger settings. So if you don't know, with 4T, you tap the trigger, let it go, and the wire will continue to run until you tap that trigger again. In our 2T, for as long as we hold that trigger, that wire is gonna run. We let it go, the wire stops. So they have what's called a power set mode right here. So here, you know, you can set it up however you like it if you already know more or less how you like your stuff. Power set, we click on it, and it'll give our suggested volts, our suggested wire speed, put in the wire diameter. We got it set to 035, because that's what we're running. Our work thickness, we got it set to 38, because that's what we're welding. 
And all this stuff right here is already preset. You still have control over your trigger settings and you do have some control over these as well. So our volts, you know, we'll turn it down and it turns red. What the machine is telling us, because it is a synergic machine, meaning it's a smart machine, is we can run it at 23 and six, but it's like calling your ex-girlfriend after a night at the bar. It's saying you can do it, but you probably shouldn't do it. Same thing if we go up and it's suggesting we don't do that, but we can if we want. Same thing with our wire speed. So we do have some control. It's saying that this is the perfect setting where it's at because that's why it's got the stars in the middle. We're gonna try it here, see what happens. Let's give it a go. So for this, I'm running 035-70S6 wire with the 7525 mix on my Argon. I am in the power set mode. It also has 340 amps with a 60% duty cycle on 100% CO2, which is an excellent match for this machine. You also have more advanced features like your start wire feed speed and end wire feed speed. You can set your up and down slope to control how fast the wire feed speed ramps up or down from the start to the end setting of a scene. You can also set your burn back control to auto trim the wire back as it stops feeding, usually 0.1 to 0.5 seconds. I usually leave mine at half a second. It also has a really unique jog function which you can cold feed the wire which is good for installing a new spool without powering the gun or wasting gas. It also features a gas purge test function which allows you to set the gas without feeding the wire. Hello. So we've been talking about all the things this thing can do with me. Whether it's flux core, dual shield, stainless, aluminum, carbon, hard wires, this thing's also got some very impressive stick capabilities. So right now I got a piece of six inch schedule 40 chucked up in the wheel. We got it two tacked. We got it wedged up. We got a 16th gap with a 332nd landing more or less. And we're gonna run this machine in the manual mode because I'm pretty much stuck on my stick settings. So we're gonna take a look at it, talk about what this thing can do as far as stick welding goes. Let's go look at the machine. So here we're still in our power set mode on our C25 setting. We're gonna flip over to DC stick and let that load up. Now, it does have a power set mode that's very similar to the way the MIG works where all this stuff is preset for you. You can choose what electrode you're welding with and set your work thickness, rod diameter, all that stuff. We're gonna be working out of the power set mode. We're gonna set this to run our route at 85 amps. Our arc force is at 20%. We're gonna turn that up about 30. We're gonna see what it does on 30. Hot starts at one second. Hot start percentage is at 9%. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and run this, see what it does for us. This machine will run just about any stick rod, including 6010 and 7018. It also has a performance of 250 amps with a 35% duty cycle, making it perfect for industrial applications. For what I'm running here, I'm running a 1 8 6010 rod with a 1 16th gap with a 3 32nd landing, and it's running phenomenally. I like it. I would have liked to have my arc force a little bit higher, but this is what happens whenever you're learning a new machine you haven't ever used before. You got to play around with it and figure it out and find what you like and what you don't like. And quite honestly with this machine, I don't have much that I don't like about this machine. Its settings are pretty spot on. In the manual mode, this machine is phenomenal. Well, we got the root in there. Leaves a lot to be desired. But we're still learning how this machine likes to run. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run the hot pass. We're going to crank this thing up. Now normally I like to really cook a hot pass in. I'm talking 160. We're going to do about 145 though just to see what this machine's made of. So you can see I got kind of a flat spot in there. And watch what this is going to do. That heat is pushing it through, so we know this machine is capable of pushing some metal around. What I'm using is a 4mm 8010, and it's really pushing through. Uh, if I would have had my arc force a little bit higher, I would have got some more push through. 
that's complete and total user error. I'm still learning this machine. But watch what it's going to do when I get to some of this clumpy stuff right here. It's really going to smoothen that stuff out. And it's going to make everything look a little bit more cohesive in there. So all in all, this machine is more than capable of running x-ray quality welds. And I have no complaints whatsoever with this machine. This machine, the arc force and the inductance is zero to 100 and anywhere in between. So with inductance, if you go lower on that, you're gonna notice that there's a lot crisper of a sound in your wire. You're gonna notice that you're gonna crown a little bit more in the middle. You're gonna notice it's not gonna quite wet in as much. It's not gonna have as much dig to it. Now, if you go higher, you're gonna notice that the puddle is a lot more fluid. It's wetting in and penetrating a little bit deeper and you're not getting as much hard spatter. You're still gonna get some spatter, but it's not gonna be quite as hard as if your inductance was lower. Now, if you don't know what arc force is, it's essentially the same thing I just said, except you're gonna see more of a softer puddle, more softer characteristics in that weld. Whereas if you go higher, you're gonna notice it's a lot more crisp. And that crisp works really well for cellulose rods so like here, I have some four millimeter 80 tens and it's a lot crisper of a puddle whenever I'm looking at it with my arc force a little bit higher. Now, if we're gonna move over to something like this, which is a 332nd 7018, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want that arc force a little bit lower because I'm gonna get a lot softer of a weld and it's gonna come out better. It's gonna look better, it's gonna run better, gonna feel better it might even taste better I don't know but looking at this and how much it's cooled down we should probably go ahead and get started on our fill passes and our cap so let's get after that so we're gonna come over here we're gonna drop these amps down we'll go 125 for the filler just see what it looks like and it's gonna be a good time let's do this So I've decided to try something here. So you can see I got a soapstone mark there and a soapstone mark there. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna cap one side with that 532-8010 and then the other side I'm gonna cap it with low hydrogen just because I wanna see how it runs and I want y'all to see how it runs. So keep in mind this is a new machine that I'm learning. I've, I haven't ran it very much myself. And this is just part of what goes into learning how to run a new machine, guys. But so far, all in all, I'm very impressed and very pleased with this Cyclone 312. Everlast did a really good job on this machine. So we got that cap put on with our 8010. This side we're gonna do 7018. So to do that, we need to come over here. We don't need to change anything here. What we do wanna do is we wanna try lowering this arc force. Now, I think 30 was low enough for that celiosic rod because remember, we can go one to 100 here. Let's try that. Let's turn that arc force up. We'll put the arc force 45, just to see what we can do with it. Our amps, we're gonna bring down to 85. Reason being is because all I got is 3 30 seconds, 70, 18. So we got that. Now let's get that side filled in and capped off. So we got it capped out. To me, it looks like the arc force was too low for the 8010. I would like it a little bit crisper. Uh, I tend to get a little bit better control out of the puddle when I have a crisper weld, which is why it's not looking great. The 7018 is okay. Uh, I'd probably go softer on it than what I did, so I'd turn my arc force a little bit lower. I still got some figuring out to do with this machine. Still got some playing around to do, but all in all, I cannot complain. So, final impressions of this machine. I gotta say, I really am enjoying this machine so far. I still got a lot of figuring out to do with it, a lot of playing with settings. Just 
typical I got a new machine thing. I know this machine is going to do a lot of good for me. It's going to help bring up some production rates of some projects I got coming up. I'm going to be able to do things a lot faster, a lot easier because instead of having a dedicated MIG machine, I have a MIG machine that can do multiple different things. I can do stainless, aluminum, carbon, I can do stick. This thing's a powerhouse. This thing's a real deal. This thing, it'll go. It'll get you there. And it'll get you there in style. For now, that's all I got for y'all. Go download the Weld app. Follow me on there at Texas Pipeliner 35. That's all I got for y'all today. I'm out of here, and I'll see y'all down the line.